So let's go on to Bluetooth architecture. This architecture diagram looks rather complicated, but actually it's fairly, fairly simple. On the bottom, we have the physical layers, and we've got three physical layers. In the middle, we've got classic Bluetooth BR and EDR. On the right-hand side, we've got Bluetooth low energy. And on the left-hand side, we've got AMP. So that's the alternate Mac 5, which in this uh, scenario would be typically an 802.11 uh, Phi. Above that, we have what would be traditionally called a Mac, a medium access controller. In BREDR, we have a baseband and the link controller and manager. Whereas in low energy, we just have a very simple link layer. Above that, we have something called the host controller interface. This is an interface between the host and the controller. You can probably guess why we called it the host controller interface at this point. What this does is it effectively allows the commoditization of Bluetooth controllers and Bluetooth hosts. You can take any qualified Bluetooth controller and work with any qualified Bluetooth host, and it will work. And that's one of the things that the qualification system actually enables. So what this means is that if, for example, you're not happy with your current chip supplier, well, you can go shop around for another chip supplier, and they'll all implement the same host controller interface. So this is a really good way of making sure that Bluetooth is as low cost as possible. Above that, we have a standard uh, multiplexing layer, which we call L2CAP, the Logical Link Control and Adaptation Protocol. This is common across all of the technologies. So this is our point of interoperability. And then above that, we have a number of protocols and profiles. So for example, we have the service discovery profile that allows us to do service discovery. We've got a whole bunch of different protocols on basic rate, like for example, the OBEX, uh, RFCOM, uh, AVDDP, et cetera, et cetera, as well as a number of profiles like A2DP, the Advanced Audio Distribution Profile for listening to high quality music, as well as, for example, AVRCP for allowing me to say, oh, I don't like that track, go to the next track, and HFP that allows me to, when I'm in the car, talk to my wife to say I'm stuck in a traffic jam. And on the low energy side, um, we've got something called Attribute Protocol and Attribute Profile that allows you to get small bits of state information. Now, there are, therefore, a number of different configurations that we can have. So, for example, we can have a BR-only implementation, which would be pretty much any device before 2010. We could have an LE-only uh, device. For example, the device on my bicycle is an LE-only device. And then how do these talk to each other? Because yes, L2CAP is the same, but the physical layers are different, the Macs are different, the protocols above are different. So to solve that, what we do is we have what are known as dual node chips. So these are, these are chips that have a common physical layer. So they have effectively the same RF analog circuitry, slightly different digital circuitry, so that you can differentiate between BR packets and LE packets. And then they have both the link manager, so to be able to talk to BR-only devices, and the link layer to talk to the LE devices. So for example, your cell phone would implement the dual mode device. My Bluetooth headset would implement the Bluetooth basic rate only, and my foot pod would only implement the low energy. But that cell phone can talk to both of those. And as Richard said this morning, virtually every single uh, chip that's going into cell phones and computers and tablets and things like that have dual mode silicon in there. So we have enabled billions of devices that support low energy and basic rate in a single form factor today. So if you're looking for a technology which you want to butt into a peripheral for say a cell phone, that's the technology to use.